Tony from CassetteComeback.com Now I'm just going to do another short little video on these babies. Yes, we're back to the true mechanisms again. Now, when I did the last video, you might have noticed in it, I said that these are all thoughts, theories. I've not said anything is fact, they're just my thoughts. The whole point of it was to open discussion. You know, see if anyone else has uncovered anything. See if anyone else has any better theories. I never said, this is what it is, this is a law, accept it. Which some of you um, who are bitter and uh, unhappy with your lives seem to have taken to heart and used to beat with a stick with, but I don't care. If you want to basically talk to me, or if you have a differing opinion or a different thought on something, that's absolutely fine. I have never ever professed to being always right, nor have I ever professed to being an expert. I am just a guy that loves cassettes and wants to share my joy with people. That's it. It's as simple as that. So if you want to talk to me, talk to me as if you would. Say we bumped into each other in a pub. You can say that you think I'm wrong about something, you can say why, and if I think you're right, I'll say, you know what, I think you're right, fella. Simple as that. You want to talk to me like a bitter old twisted internet troll, it's two clicks and you disappear from my life forever. Life is too short to drink bad wine and I'm not someone that wants to put up with trolls. Simple as that. You want to troll me, two clicks, you're gone forever. Simple as that. I don't care that you don't subscribe to me, I don't care that you badmouth me elsewhere. All I care is about the decent people who are in this hobby for the enjoyment of it, not because they're bitter and twisted and they will never go to other people. Simple as that. So. I'm going to present some stuff today, which is an amalgam of things that have been said on forums, on the YouTube channel, in Facebook, some more theories that you guys have put together that I believe make a lot more sense than what I've said, which was basically these could be knockoffs, they could be from racks because they came from Cyprus, who knows, just conjecture. But I've got some more theories, and I'm saying that now, theories, not facts, theories, about where these come from. Now, as much as there are knockoffs of these, I mean, look at this picture here. Look at these two. One's in a white shell, one's in a black shell. Yeah, they're, they're knockoffs. These ones in the clear shell, I believe, actually are genuine TDK. I'm going to back that up now with some actual evidence. You know, because I've gone out and got evidence and proof rather than just sitting behind my keyboard and, and saying stuff, you know, to make me feel better about how bad my life is. I've got some evidence. Let me show you. What we have here is something that was sent to discount electronic distributors in Toronto. And it's got TDK tape on it and it's all sealed. This is all sealed, unopened, untampered and what is it it is a master crate of tdk true mechanism d's sealed since 1979 sealed with tdk tape we just go around the side there we go 200 pieces made in japan now the question I have to ask at this point is, and like I say, it's thoughts, it could not be fact, it might not be fact, it might not have happened, but if you're counterfeiting these, wouldn't you like them to not stand out, i.e. you wouldn't put what they are on the side if they were known to be counterfeited, would you? I mean, seriously, would you? You'd have these in plain brown boxes, just like if you order something from an adult website. You wouldn't want it turning up in a bag that says, you know, hardcore filth on it, would you? No. You want it plain brown. It's conspicuous. So the fact that these come in a master crate, which proudly displays what they are on them, says to me these are genuine. It's got TDK tape on it, which is all sealed. Even if you were the mega counterfeiters, and you've got to think these were so cheap, why would you go to all this hassle? People buying them on the shelves wouldn't know about these boxes, would they? Think about it. So, let us now unearth these 41-year-old cassettes. I mean, and I know I've done unwrappings before, 
but never something like this. Just bear with me, I'm going to put this back in the tripod. If the tripod will work for me. Right, there we go. Let's open this up. There we go. Right. Like I say, this is a bit different to unwrapping an MAR, isn't it? Wow, that's good tape, that. They made good cassette tapes and good packing tapes, apparently, to TDK. I hope these aren't rotten. <laughs> I hope they've been stored well. There we go. Brand new true mechanism. And again, these come in a box. Not just stacked, but they come in a TDK box with a lot number on it and everything. Just bear with me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, so if we compare them to a box which this is a true mechanism this is what regular d's came in same design same style bit different printing the lot numbers printed in different places but they're certainly from the same but like i say that if you look this is open but it's got the perforated tear strips there that tdk's did have in the day and likewise these have the perforated tear strips on them. Let's let's crack one open. There we go. And there they are. Now, I just want to check something. So, if we look here, this says lot ASA318. Sorry, A2SA318. If we look at the bottom here, A2SA318. Let's open up one of these. In fact, I'm going to get my little uh, knife for this one. I'm going to try and do it a bit delicately. Oh, well, never mind. So much for doing it delicately. But let's check the top. Let's have a look. A, this says A, B, A, A, 3, 1, 0. Mm. Okay, so maybe these don't directly correlate with the, with the actual lot number on there. Maybe it's a different serial number, but there we go. I mean, what do you want me to say? I mean, my thoughts at this point on these cassettes are this okay these are genuine tdk these are genuine tdk that were destined for poorer markets what do i mean by poorer markets i mean markets if we take and say the comparison again with a regular one we had you know you you know we've got the uh, japan address new york dusseldorf and surrey yeah these were destined for markets where they didn't have headquarters, where they didn't have a present, cheaper markets. So they couldn't put that on the back. They just put the generic Japanese address on them because they didn't have local distributors in the countries that these were being sold in. The problem comes when you think about it, that these quite possibly, I mean, you know, you saw the label on this where it came from a discount supplier and from reading what I've read on the Facebook groups and in the YouTube comments these weren't really sold through main distributors you found them mostly in discount shops etc in the markets why because these were never destined to hit America they were never destined to hit Europe what's happened is and again this is just theory but it makes the most sense is that these were bought in bulk because they were cheaper because they were designed for cheaper markets these were bought in bulk from these markets and imported into the prime markets where you know the regular d was on sale 
But because they were cheaper to buy, they were cheaper to sell. And these were undercutting the regular TDKD. And the regular TDKD distributors were going, oh, what's going on? What's all these D true mechanisms which I'm finding everywhere, which are for sale cheaper than the ones we're selling? I thought we had price control, you know, but a monopoly. And TDK didn't like this. And so I'm not saying Gary Ray is wrong when the FBI guy said the counterfeit must be destroyed. I think that's probably what just the FBI said. I think the real reason these were destroyed was because they were grey market. Grey market, maybe they were being smuggled in, maybe the right taxes and customs weren't being paid on them. Who knows? But it makes more sense considering that these have TDK tape, because I've used a few since then, and they perform just as good as the regular 1979 TDKD. When I did the thing with the biasing and yeah, maybe it was a little bit out, meh, you know, 79, so it's 41 years different, but it wasn't a million miles out. But same hubs inside, same slip sheets. They use a, a TDK shell, which might have been used on stuff like the Mavericks, which was the cheaper TDK before this. And also head cleaners. It's got the head cleaner case, which is stamped TDK. I mean, if we look at this one here, the Japan on this one, I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't have the round circle like the other one did. So the other ones had a round circle there, these didn't, but it's TDK there. The printing, yeah, the C90, What it, the, the theory behind this is, is back in the 70s, yeah, a three colour print was much cheaper than a four colour print. So we've got black, red and orange, three colours. The C90 is dithered black. So they couldn't do green as well because that would be four colours. However, because the 60 is that colour orange, they could colour that in because then it would still be the three colours. And the reason that we've got the green on the cassette is that there's still only three colours. Only we've got black, red and green now. So they used a cheaper three colour printing method, method to save costs on it. That's why the 90 is grey. So the bottom line is these were being imported cheaper sold cheaper, the distributors didn't like it, TDK wanted them off the market and turned around to the authorities saying these are illegal, these are imports, these are not destined for these markets, we want them destroyed. That makes a lot more sense than being counterfeit considering, like I say, they bothered to make boxes, inner boxes, serial numbers, same hub, same slip sheets, TDK shells and cases, there's too much evidence in my mind to say that these are fake. My evidence from what I've seen and you've just seen me open a brand new case of these, is that these are legitimate TDK that were designed for the markets. You know what I mean? Like, like these guys here. Bing. You know, the J, the T1, the B. You know what I mean? The, these were all designed for cheaper end of the market. They were never openly publicised or marketed, and they appeared here, there, everywhere. That's where I think these were. Just a cheaper version. So... That's all I'm going to say on the subject of these. Apart from, I've grown to love these cassettes. They perform fantastically. I think they look fantastic. They look like a classy type zero, but don't perform like a classy type, classy type zero because whereas the original gray shell is a bit boring, these are not boring, these are really nice. And as you can see, I've got quite a few of them in stock. So if you want one, while they're still knocking around. If you want, as a collector, a box fresh, sealed box of 10, let me know. If you buy 10, I'll make sure that you get a nice sealed box fresh one like that. Because I don't know how many, how many more of these are gonna be out there. These only came to me because after the video, someone contacted me saying, hey, I've got a load of these, do you want them? And I've got them in the UK and in the Canadian store as well. So. If you're going to comment on this now and tell me that I'm wrong again, please do. I'm always up for being corrected because the simple thing is failure is not failure. Failure teaches success. If I'm wrong, let me know. Just do it in a nice way. You do it in a nice way, I'm going to listen. You come across as a troll, you get deleted. Simple. Life's too short to put up with people like that. And it's not because I'm a snowflake. It's just because I'm intelligent and can't be asked with people who can't be asked with me. Simple as that. So thanks for watching. There's going to be another video up shortly, but this one should tide you over until that one comes. Until then, the next video, ha ha ha. Take care, stay safe, happy taping. Bye bye.